and then we need to uh, model the, the signals somehow and and this looks like dfs or bfs Good morning, everybody. Here are the guys from Germany. I'm Thomas, and my guests today are Frank and Achim. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Thomas. And good morning, Achim. Good morning, Thomas. Hello, world. Achim, can you explain us the riddle for day 20? Yes. Um, we are given some kind of machine consisting of gates. So... We have these percent gates, which are um, flip-flops, and we have these gates dis described, dis distinguished by this ampersand, which are effect effectively NAND gates. So, if they, if all inputs on the NAND gate are one, it uh, returns a zero. Otherwise, it returns a one. So pretty much the, the definition of an end. Achim, this riddle looks like a, a queue uh, which we have to build, right? Yes, we have to build it. So we we have a button that 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 emits low signals, so zeros, and they are sent to the broadcaster, and from the broadcaster it is distributed into the machine. Okay, Frank. Um, which algorithm do you prefer for a riddle like this? Well, it looks like in graph. So uh, each gutter or each each uh, unit is connected to some other unit. So it's a uh, uh, in first place, it's it's a graph where there are edges, which is the, the connections between them. And so we have to send the signals to the edges. So this is an an, an agent. Uh, graph like we have it in other puzzles and then we need to uh, model the, the signals somehow and and this looks like dfs or bfs and actually if we think deeper about it uh, uh, it comes uh, to true that it uh, has to be a bfs a breath first search or breath uh, first uh, uh, algorithm to to process the pulses here in this uh, graph okay and why yeah, well, the, the uh, rules of the signal processing here in the text says that um, um, these uh, things have to not be mixed uh, together. And this graph has kind of loops where these um, um, signals uh, go in, in circles to itself. And then it uh, is like a, in a real processor, there are these processor ticks. And then uh, if something happens in the next tick and you you calculate it in the tick before, then you get a wrong result. So we need to breath first search. This means um, on every tick, all signals are sent. And then on the next tick, we, we restart the cycle. Okay. Achim, do you have code for this, for that, for that to show? I have a little bit code for that, yes. So I go to my part one method to illustrate that. So when pressing the button, um, I don't model the, the button module here spe specially, but uh, the low signal is put into the broadcaster. The broadcaster sends the signal and it, and, and it, and it gets sent to a number of receivers that are attached to the broadcaster. And uh, then I go into the loop where I go through the communicating to the module that I have addressed, that I have sent information towards. And uh, these will then react. So um, okay. yes. Um, Can you? So I have a distinctive process method. So I have a I have a receive method that is called by that is mo most of the time called by the send methods, but also here especially. But I have the receive phase, then I have the process phase, and then I have then and then I have the send phase. So every node that is addressed it processes 
its data virtually at the same time without doing communication to any other node. And then they are virtually sending at the same time. Again, with, uh, without communicating to any other node. Also it's hard to split these both use cases to make it in the same time for every tick. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's not really hard. So you got a, a list of signals that have to be sent here. In, in this code, it's the two process. So um, now, now what you can do is you always take the first from the two process and then this creates other signals and these other signals you put on the end of this thing. And this uh, uh, guarantees that all signals from one uh, a tick are processed before the next tick because the signals from the next tick always go to the end of the queue and you always take from the beginning. So um, even if there are a thousand signals in one tick, you first go all through these thousand ticks and a uh, thousand signals and then all the others uh, from the next tick uh, come, come there. And that's basically how the breath first search works. So you always go on one level and then you step to the next. Okay, is there something else for part number one? If not, then we come to the twist. What is the twist in part number two? The twist in part number two is that uh, our puzzle input uh, mentions a module named Rx, for which we have no description. That, uh, that is already something that we stumble upon in part one, because we have to address Rx, but we don't know what Rx is. So we had to do amends for that. And uh, the point is uh, that Rx is the, is, is the gate that really is really of interest. So the question is, how often do we have to push the button until Rx receives a low pulse? Okay. And for that, it is a, at least a bit helpful if you have an idea on how, how your, on how the machine looks that, that your puzzle input describes. Uh, Do you have a graph or something else? I have a that? graph for that. So this is a graph of my, of, of the machine that I have to work with. And, uh, I believe Frank's machine looks somewhat similar. Yeah. So we have here the R and the RX node that we want a low signal to be sent to. And uh, directly in front of it is an end. So to, to have this item sent a low pulse to RX, all the inputs have to be high. And uh, it receives information from these four nands, with our, which are essentially knots. But if we can mon if we monitor these four gates, names may differ on different puzzle inputs, um, but if you monitor them and find out how many button pushes it needs, that they send a one, we can then take those four values and uh, calculate the least common multiple of these four values and have uh, the answer. The other way around would be running the entire machine for a lot of cycles and maybe in a few days you have a result. Okay. So it's um, helpful to have the, have a tool like this. Um, and I know, Frank, uh, you got an online tool which do this more or less automatically. Can you uh, introduce us this tool? Yeah, I can show something here. Give me a second. So now you see the picture that um, uh, that this tool produces, and and it's um, it's called where the Second, it's called raw graph. From um, I will move it to the 
screen here. So, so from GitHub, and there you can put in such a graph description that I created from my source code, and then it creates such a more or less nice output, and then uh, it's quite handy to get an overlook uh, pretty quick. Very nice. Cool, very cool. Okay, this is helpful. And then what is uh, next important to solve this riddle? Just um, have a watch on the notes before. Is this everything? Achim? Um, if I go back to my graph, um, you could you could also track uh, the notes directly in front of them. Yeah. You could you could share again, Ari. Let me share it again. So, in in my puzzle input, we want DD to receive all ones. So if CC sends a one, we we'll comply to that at least from that point. We could also look on LK to send a zero because CC uh, just acts an, as a not gate. An inverter. Okay. So, is this um, the same um, solution like you do, um, Frank, or do you have a different approach to get the result? No, it's basically the same approach. So, what what was crucial to me is that there are um, these uh, flip flop gates. So uh, I counted them and I saw that it's 48 flip flop gates in my whole graph. And then from this graph, you see it here nicely with the colors. For each of the four things that are connected to Rx, there are exactly 12 flip flop gates. And this is uh, uh, no coincidence. So this looks like it is planned to be like that. So um, um, from that point, the idea is that uh, each of these um, um, four gates is like a counter, which has 12 bits of, of input. And, and actually, if you run this thing and then check uh, when when there is an, a low signal coming out of this, um, then we see that it's uh, within the ranges of, of a 12-bit number. It's less than 4,000 loops until each one of them sends such a signal. That's why you are very fast with your solution. Yeah, well, okay. it, it does not run very long because you have iterate only some thousand steps, the whole machine, and this uh, goes in, in milliseconds. So then uh, Arjen could explain how to come from these four numbers to the solution in the end. Yeah, please Arjen, move on. So to, to get the final result, if we have these four numbers, I have to go down to the other method. So I have uh, this cycles map for the four modules that I'm interested in. I, I have a list of long values. I have this list just in case that uh, maybe I have some kind of a ramp up phase that uh, doesn't harmonize and then I go into a, a stable loop. But uh, my debug output for the first three values each show that uh, it's stable from the beginning. So whenever I detect that uh, one of these four gates has sent a high pulse, I note that down and reset the, and the high pulse counter on that, on that item. So that it's zero again until it, it gets one again. And uh, for calculating the final res result, I go through the first value of of each of these four four repetitions, and uh, on those four remaining values, I do uh, at least common multiple um, calculation. And you reduce from day eight the LCM method. What is it? Lower counter? Lower common multiple. Lower, I recycle okay. it from lowest, day eight. Lowest common multiple. Lowest. 
Okay, nice. So actually, but for my input, this was not necessary to use the LCM here because it was uh, sufficient to simply multiply the four numbers for some reason. Um, yeah. It seems to be uh, input dependent. I still had the LCM in uh, because I had I had a bug and uh, didn't use the lowest numbers, but uh, the times okay. two multi multiple and um, yeah. Big thank you to your explanations. Ari, do you like this riddle? I definitely liked the first part. When I then saw the twist, uh, it was something like, oof. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank, do you like this riddle? Uh, I found it clumsy to implement and to understand. So there are a lot of details in the text. I don't like this too much if it's so much text parsing and text understanding. Uh, well, we had to work through this um, um, and we needed some hours for this. So uh, maybe that's the reason there. Yeah. Then big thank you and we see us tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.